Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna got a bit of spare time, guys. So I just thought I'd just go uh, record this. Um, obviously, got no viewers at the moment, but I'm not. Um, it's just easy for me to record it this way. Um, hopefully, this catches on. But um, yeah, I'm just just gonna do appreciating on this uh, SU. SU-34 um, by Tamiya, I uh, think it's a reboxing from um, Tallery, I think, I think, but um, yeah, that's, that's um, Yeah, getting back to it. Sorry, guys, I was just you know, pissed around back there. Um, yeah, so what I've already done, I've uh, just um, primed it, uh, base coated it with, 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 with um, air superiority blue by life color, just an acrylic. Um, yeah, I had to thin this right out first. I tried putting in the gun, yeah, she blocked, blocked it up. Um, in the uh, wider neo, yeah, just man, blocked it right up. So I had to pull the whole thing apart, and obviously I thought the paint was thin enough, but no, this yeah, this paint was really thick. So empty the gun out. Um, yeah, had to had to um, had to put some more in there. But um, yeah, so like. I mean, you, you guys can join, uh, more than willing. Yeah, if you want to join, just uh, pop your question down there and I'll you know, send you a link. But I don't really expect many people to be on here because most of my subscribers are either from, well, most of you guys out there are either from the States or from the UK, and me being in Australia, the, um, yeah, the time difference. Um, it's just crazy. I think, it's what I, think. I think I'm nine hours in front of the UK. Uh, the US, I'm not too sure. Um, I think I think they're even further behind us, I think. So I think a bit more. But um, well, what I am trying to do, because I, I do know there's a few Aussies um, out there, even on the ISM, ISM Facebook page. And obviously there's yeah, there's you Benny out there Benny Mac um, yeah love it'd be pretty cool if you sort of started doing this um, I know you don't get much time you got family and um, yeah family kids and you work obviously you work just like me so yeah the time you do have it's pretty 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 slim so but yeah finishing work early today I've sort of Got a bit more, um, bit more time to um, yeah, bit more time to work on my hobby, I guess. Um, yep. yep, yep, yep. So, getting back to it. Um, yeah. It's 
Sorry guys, yeah, it's just completely different from normally recording, editing, and then um, and then cutting out all the all the crap, I guess you could say. So this is basically just raw footage of me just building. I don't know how long we can do this for until I guess it's time to go to bed. Um, so yeah, so oh, before I get into it, this is what I picked up today. Drop down to um, Gimpy Toy World. That's well, the nearest town that I live, I live to next to Gimpy. So um, on my way home from work today, yeah, just picked up these. Uh, might as well do like a little review. Um, so got these. I can just sort of hang on. Got to change all this. My camera control. Bear with me for a minute. Yeah, so get this SG thirty four out of the way. So we get a shot. There's some more parts, the exhaust nozzles. Um, let's put the rest of it. And I'm just doing that. Push up there. All right. Yeah, so I picked these up today. I want to do something different. Um, it's we just yeah, just painting, doing one to thirty-five, or I just finished doing the Panther one to thirty-five by Ravel. Uh, I think previously before that, the last two builds, right? I did the um, Ravel uh, Kenworth T nine hundred, um, and then also the the Airfix Westland Lynx. Um, that and then I'm still at the 135 Blackhawk that I'm I'm still building. It's, yeah, it's like yeah, it's one of those things where you've um, you've got to have. Well, I, I've got to have. I've got to be really into it to want to build it because at the moment um, I don't think it's new. It's on the shelf somewhere. Um, yeah, just uh, I'll get it out for you. Yeah, that's the bad boy there. Yeah, so what's what's happened? This is only this is far as I've gotten into it. I've got a couple of chairs as well. Um, I'd love to know where it all is, actually. Okay, yeah, so basically all I've done is um the rear rotor. And then I've got the uh, the pilot seats there. I'll zoom in. Um, hopefully, this webcam behaves itself. Yeah, so what we've got here is, I don't know what settings it's on to, um, 60 inch, uh, uh, I was going to have to do Off a bit, so it's not so pixely. Um, yeah, so yeah, they're the pilot seats. Oh, get some light on this thing. Yeah, so you can see I've just bit a bit of um, I think it was uh, Vallejo's uh, model there. I think it's silver or something. Like Gunmetal, I can't remember. That's been awesome. Since I've painted it, um, and then yeah, that's that's just black. Um, I think it was Humbrol matte black acrylic, and then just dry brushed with some kind of grey. Um, and the dash, 
Um, that was. Uh, I think it's not. So the dash was yeah, I think it was um, I used um, uh, I think it's here yeah just model masters acrylic um, aircraft aircraft uh, interior black that's not the bottle it's, um, it's I think that's it there but it's now a painting stand so yeah like that so yeah just sprayed that with there and um, dry brushed it with, I think it was one of the greys from my Tallery paints there, just um, down there somewhere. It's like a dark, I think I worked, well, I'll put it this way, I worked my way from a dark grey to a light grey, to a very, very light grey. Um, and then using um, the, the um, some of the videos that you watch of mine. Um, and just these disposable eyeliner makeup brushes that I got. Um, yeah, just. But I've got a really scruffed up one. I'd love to know where that is because it's. Um, I was actually using the clean and airbrush last night, so it'll be floating around somewhere. Um, yeah, but I've got one with a really, really, really scruffed up tip. So and then I just use it as a dry brush, and then yeah, just really lightly because it's the bristles are really soft but they're really really short um, so well the scuffed up bit is anyway if I can find that thing if I can find it, here it is yeah perfect so yeah so there's a well that's um, there's one with like it's bristles or the tip still half decent I've actually put a bit of uh, glue on the end of it just to hold the um, Tip, tip together. Um, it's yeah, it's more for. I'm using that as a like sort of um, more for washes and that now. Like it soaks it up, but then the the ink or wash will just absolutely just come running down the side. And I can use like a pen or a pencil, so it doesn't work for everything. But it's the things. Um, it's yeah, like I always say, my motto is you know, everything has a use for something, whether it's Good or dinged up, you got a crappy old brush, um, you got a shitty old airbrush needle, which I haven't thrown away. This is out of a pache. Um, I use it for everything. I use it for scribing. I use it for um, like heating it up with a lighter, and you actually you know, basically um, melt the plastic. You know, for damage or yeah, anything. Um, super glue, super gluing, scribing, scratching. Yeah, so if you've got an old airbrush needle where it ain't throw it, definitely don't throw it away. Um, but then getting back to this, so if I wet it down, which is, looks pretty stiff because it's dry, but if I wet it down, you actually see how soft these bristles are. Or if we get an airbrush out, an airbrush needle. Yeah, like it's, it's still a little bit dry. I'll just have a sec a bit. As you can see how much it flexes, and it's like a little, yeah, it's like a little dry brush, and it's really like it's. Up to get my phone. Making fart noises. Um. Yeah. So it's. That um, like it's really really good for small detail. Um, I the way I paint, I go really heavy handed. I guess it's like you know basically you drive a car fast, you're lead footed, but yeah, really heavy handed. So um, if I try and paint something on like really really small detail, normally I'll get carried away and get too much paint on there, and then I'll just yeah just ruin the finish that I'm trying to get. Um, but using this thing because it's such a light tool, like it's, if I can describe it, it's like a um, micro brush. If you get those micro brushes that they, I think you can still get them, but I haven't bought them in years. Um, so I've actually got these to replace them, and they're so much cheaper. 
Um, yeah, so like because it's such a light tool, um, you can just be really gentle with it, and um, and because the bristles are so so fine, like it's they're really really fine bristles, and it um, it holds a lot of paint. But being a dry brush, it holds a lot of paint when you're dry brushing. That makes sense. Like it's um, you can dry brush for longer. If, yeah, that's that's basically what I'm saying with it. Before the paint runs out, your brush or it dries because it will hold a lot of paint inside. And you just carefully, I just paint that, and then yeah, and I just um, glossed it with um, just Vallejo's polyurethane gloss primer, and then I just gave it a wash with um, Tamiya's accent panel line wash, and then cleaned it up a bit, left a bit of black there because I I want it kind of a, uh, I didn't want it too too refined, so I just left a bit of the black on there on the outside even. And then um, yeah, just washed all in here and yeah, the usual usual biz. And then sealed her up, let that dry obviously, and sealed her up with some more clear gloss. But then yeah, getting back to this, why I'm just taking taking me so long. Um, yeah, these legs are just absolutely just like I'm ready to <laughs> just about to throw this out the window. Like these legs, you glue them on and they break and. And then it's got to go in there. It's got to fit to the bottom like that. You see, it just comes off that one. Um, so that's why that's taking so long. So this, is, I guess, this is going to be a uh, a long-term build. It's going to be one of those things where people go, "Have you finished that yet?" And you're like, "No." Nah. And it's probably like it's eight, nine months down the track, and you're like, "No." Nah. So once I get once I get over the the cabin. Like once it sort of that goes in, um, so I've got to glue the seats in. Still got to, yeah. That's where the center console goes. There, so it pops in there like that. Oops. Oh, by the sounds of things, it doesn't want to just pop in. Um, yeah, it sits there and the seats. There's like four holes there where the seats go. Uh, once that goes on. And this single get this shot. Yeah, this thing will because you there your gunner seats. You can carefully put this down without breaking anymore. So that basically there's two two tags on the back. Just got to go in. Like so. And once that goes in, like that, it um, oops, it all goes together, and I still got to do a bit of wash. Put a wash in behind these panels here, behind these beams. <laughs> Um, and this is actually the box plus other crap that goes in there. That's the deck we'll show you. Um, that's the deck we'll show you there. Yeah, so I'd love to try and source an Australian deck we'll show you there. Um, because I know that there's a lot, some of the um, some of the Blackhawks are getting retired around the country now. So if I can do a do an Australian Blackhawk, that'd be pretty cool. So being a long-term build, um, it's it's going to give me give me a chance to source some. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but not getting into all the parts. It's that's the fuselage on the outside of the helicopter once it's um once that goes once it goes in. But then to give you an idea on how big this thing is, um there's a thirty centimeter ruler. So I'll make that I'll make that there, that's thirty. Or thirty to there, it's like the whole lot. And then this thing extends um the, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
eight, nine, ten, ten and a half. So that's forty, probably about forty-two, um, four hundred and twenty mils um, long. And the rotor blade's huge. Um, Yes, got the rotor blade here. Yep, so if I get away, I'm going to get all this out of the way. <laughs> There's the rotor blade. I can't even get a shot, so I'll be just freaking thing this. Okay. Alright, right, guys, that's the best I can get it. There you go. Do, 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 do. Go that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, there's one. That's just one blade. I'll show you this one. One blade. That's from the hub all the way to the end is the 235 mils. So you're looking around about and just almost five, yeah, nearly half a meter. Um, that's pretty big. But then, um, and this has only just been primed, like it's, yeah, it's a bit of a dust dust collector at the moment because she's just sitting on top of the shelf, on top there. And I've just got it clipped onto on an alligator clip, just on my little cheap, dodgy, Mr. Magnifying Glass things, but now yeah, I don't even use it except just to hold stuff now because I've got that mag, mag, um, that mag light over there, mag lamp. But I've just uh, added a bit of wire in here, like just a bit of brass wire into the top of the hub there, just to give it, just to give it a bit of detail. So that's, that's what I'm working on there. Um, and and I've still got these guys to go because that panther that I built, I've got these up these figures here. And then this part, they're all black hole parts. I don't worry about. That little speck in there, and they're just crappy old. It's all not crappy, but spare tank tracks I had off the Panther, and they're the rounds. So I've only haven't even painted the middle yet. So you can see, like, yeah, the middle's still. Oops. Yeah, the middle's still like not painted because I've had the clamps on there holding it, just so I can paint the outside. So there's the rounds. Now I've got the ammo crates to do. Like they're nearly, well, they're pretty much almost done. These things. We're just going to do the cat on this one. So we're just going to do the cat there. Um, and then for these boxes, you can see the difference between one that's being weathered and stuff. Um, and this was using the UMP dark dirt. And just heaps of other things like just um, watered down acrylic washes and all sorts of other stuff. Um, yeah, so you can see how plain that, that looks. I can't really see it from there, I guess, but it's still very glossy. I might have to get another, another coat of gloss. Um, and that one's, yeah, so you can see the difference there. I've got a couple of miniatures. I still want to do a diorama base, but I've got to source the um, the MDF base. Um, so I might have to go to my right to a what do they call them? One of those like a craft shop, but I don't really have one up here in this my hometown. So I've got to next time I go somewhere out of this town and. Yeah, to a certain store that I used to go to. Um, that's where I'll probably um, probably get it. But um, 
point. So who knows what all that is? But who knows when I'll do that? That's just it's one of those things where yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blow fifty bucks in fields to get like a two dollar base. So when it's when I'm down there doing something and yeah, I'll just do a special trip down there while I'm down there. So so that's on hold. Now I got a couple of minis that look like zombies would do his eyes again. But there's only a couple of couple of models I want to use. Um, I think it was yeah, he's out because he looks like he's yeah, looks like he's had the shit kicked out of him. Um, so I've got now yeah, this guy here and this bloke will be on the tank. So, Yeah, so eventually there's going to be this will be sitting on a base, like a nice, yeah, like a nice door, like a vineyard base. It might not be like a massive, massive base. You know, it's just going to be just big enough just to sort of display um, all these guys. So basically, old mate's going to be standing on the back here, getting around, handed up to him. And then you're going to have uh, old, uh, old, old mate down here passing up the round. Right, so he's going to be holding that, passing it up. And, and I think the, the also have chosen to just use two because I don't want too much because it's such a small base. I don't want too much in it. Um, I'm going to have yeah, the cat on the box. So I put a fair few. Like, like it comes with four boxes in the um. That's the uh, the the Tamiya German tank loading uh, or ammo loading crew set. Um, so if you guys are interested in what I actually used, and that's the set I used for it. That's it there. So you, oh, you still get heaps of stuff in there, like you've got all these other rounds and for um, like tiger tanks and stuff, and you still got more boxes in there, like random arms. So if you want a Frankenstein a miniature or something else, you still got like different arms and heads. So yeah, so don't think you know that's all you get in the kit. You get where you, the kit's actually chock a block for what you pay for, um, and I have one of these rounds sitting in the box. But I'm not going to yeah, So I'm going to have another open box here, like he's already emptied it, like it's an empty, empty box, empty crate. Um, oops. So I can get this in there. So, oops. Yeah, so we can get it like that. So you actually see the round in there. So probably like the next one that he empties up. Like it's this is just a mock. Like it's not. Um, this is how I'm going to have it. And this is what it's going to look like. It's it's just um yeah, but that's just a rough idea on how it's going to look. But you know these things could be over there, or it's it just depends on what base I get and. Um, and yeah, what works out at the end of the day, so, so that's what she's going to look like, a rough idea. So it's still a fair bit to go. I mean, the tank's finished, but the diorama is not having started that yet. So, oops. Yeah. So put all that back up the top there. Um, so yeah, so that's what I picked up today. Sorry about all that, but I thought I'd get all that out of the way before I do this. Um, picked up some 1 to 72 from Airfix. Um, just some World War Two look like from personnel. Um, yeah, so what what it comes with is. Um, <clears throat> just an Airfix club thing. Uh, I don't even bother about it. Um, so 
So it's and I and this is the first time buying these. I've never actually bought. Um, okay, let me let me check. No, I haven't. I've never actually bought one to seventy two um, scale miniatures at all. So this is new to me. But looking down here, um, I seen it down there. These things are as bloody as old as I am. Oh, this is just crazy. Um, yeah. So Airfix nineteen seventy six. Um, yeah, so they're pretty old, <laughs> 38 years old. Um, yeah, so like, and if you're wondering what they feel like, and I thought, you know, they're going to be brittle as parts are going to break. Um, if you, if you guys remember, or if your kids, if you guys, if you guys got kids, uh, or you, or you were to play with them yourselves, um, you know, these little plastic army men used to buy in big bags. So. Yeah, he's just going to be he's just a little test subject. I'm actually going to prime him up. I'm actually going to paint him up. So I'm actually thinking about doing that with the um, going to the toy shop one day and just buying a packet of army men and just yeah, keep them as test subjects for new products and paints and just yeah, just practice new techniques instead of blowing it on a on an expensive kit. Um, yeah, just practice on a crappy old army man. I mean, there's enough detail on there. You can paint his boots and. You know, they turn out pretty good. He's just got a really, really fat head. Yeah. But you can see it heaps of them. So on the back of the box here, it's what it says. It says uh, contains 46 unpainted pieces, and it just tells you you got three of them, four of them, three of them, and so on. Um, and then. And on the front of the box there, actual size, and then I actually did check. It was, yeah, I was like, you know, you better not be lying. So that's the actual man on the box, and that's pretty much yeah. So they are actual size, and yeah, just got a picture. There's no no um, painting guide in there. Like there's nothing at all. So basically, you've either got to go up and box, um, or Google it, or if you've got some old instructions um, laying around with a uh, paint call out, color call out, you can use that. Well, the next next best thing is um, is a a ref like a book um, or a magazine or whatever. If you've got something that you can look at for colors, then because at, at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm uh, going to have to either go off the box. There's a book that I want to buy. And it's you know, it's probably about sixty bucks, and it's got everything. Um, so, I yeah, thought that was in Toowoomba, I think. Um, yeah, it's a long way from here. It's about you know, Toowoomba's probably about three hours from here. So, don't think I'll be going back there in a short, no, in a hurry. Oh, no, Dolby, I think it was. No, it was Dolby. That's right. But yeah, they're really soft, really, really soft um, plastic. You can see how soft the um, sprue is, like it just bends, like a normal sprue will just snap. And um, but the details, surprisingly, the I'm very impressed with the detail for the size. Like I thought there was pretty much going to be next to no detail on these things. Um, if I can get something to show you. No, I don't want to do with that. I'm just going to find this. Um, yeah. So, just excuse me. I'm completely unprepared for this. This is just a random thing. Um, I think I'm going to start doing more of these, actually, guys. It's um, just, yeah, just the pure fact that the amount of time that I get during the day, it's it's um, like instead of pumping out one or two videos a, a week, or not even sometimes it's only about one one a week or one a fortnight. Um, doing it this way, I can just film while I'm building or while I'm at the bench, and then um, I can yeah just chuck them straight up. So. But that's 
I don't want to show you. So that's the officer. I'll actually show you these guys here. Oh, there's a there's a bloke holding a like an aircraft bomb. Focus of this camera, dude. This camera is renowned for not focusing, so. But yeah, you get the idea. It's um, not too bad. I'm pretty happy. So they're not going to take much. It's I think it's just going to be basically base coating or priming them, base coating them, um, dry brushing, and um, giving them a wash, and then just um, just painting um, matte um, matte varnish. Over the clothes, and you probably just a bit of semi gloss over the skin and his boots, and then you're done. Um, the bombs will be the same, so yeah, like I'm, I'm actually looking forward to paying these. And because you do get so many of them, I mean, you're not going to line obviously, you're not going to have like four, four blokes or four of the same blokes, you know, um, laying on the ground like that, putting ammo into it, on laying on the wing. Um, you're not going to have, you know, all these blokes holding hoses with fuel bowsers and, um, you know, and three officers standing there all in the same pose. So you, you're going to be able to do a fair few kits with this. Um, so like, you know, I think I only paid ten bucks. So in the UK, you're probably paying a fiver for it. Um, but I thought that was pretty good. It's yeah, it's, it's more like just having good, if just having accessories. Uh, but the reason why I bought it is actually um, a hobby shop in town. Well, it's actually a toy shop, um, Gimpy Toy World. And it's the only hobby shop that's around here. Um, it's if I if I want to get a like a the next, um, maybe even the Sunshine Coast, um, about an hour and a half south from here, or just, I don't know, about just under an hour and a half uh, from here. They've got a big toy world down there, but um, it's, you know, I mean, like realistically, I can get um, the stuff up here because. It's more really paint, paint that I need, um, and AX20A, and and then like yeah, it's it's easy. So it, it, it's only just opened up. I was getting back to just I was shut for a while, changed owners, and original owners opened it back up again, um, and so it's yeah. So I'm actually quite happy that it did open back up. So I dropped in there today after work. I was actually gutted when I found out um, it was shutting down the other, uh, the old store. It's the same place, but just a bit of reno, uh, renovation and yeah, new stores open. Um, so yeah, which has made it really hard for me if I needed paint and all sorts of stuff. I used to, have to go down to Brisbane, down to Hobby Rama, actually go to a hobby shop, and that's yeah, that's my nearest hobby shop, guys. It's like a two hours two hour drive from here. So normally when I go, when I did go there, I spent spent up big. Um, had a couple of comments on um, from a couple of people that you know they'd, they'd get shot if they spent that much money at a hobby shop. Um, but yeah, like I wasn't going there every weekend. I was probably going there um, every couple of months, or well, maybe every three months. So by then, you know, you've, you've used up heaps of thinners and. Um, paints and you know, new kits. You go down to buy a couple of kits um, that I can't. Well, I can't get um, main kits up here. I can't. I can't get um, um, AFV um, club kits up here. And all, all I can really get up here is um, Academy, um, Revell. Um, what else can I get up here? A tallery. Um, and that's and that's oh, and that's about it. Uh, I might get the odd Tamiya kit, but yeah, just a range, you know, 
give you can just imagine like a a small um, small country small country town toy shop, but like yeah, it's it's not going to be nothing like a a big a big hobby shop that you got that you'd have in the city. But um, yeah, I'm pretty lucky that I've got one. That's the main thing. So what I've what I've actually got here is I've got a a one to seventy two um, from Academy. It's a ME one six three B BS comic or B slash S. It's not really BS. It's not a bullshit comic. That's B slash S. Um, and it comes with a little tow tractor. On the bottom here, so yeah, it comes with that, which is pretty cool. Like, that's why I got it. it just this had not cost me. I think it was like uh, twelve dollars. So I thought it was an absolute steal. Um, I just for a little kit, but I'll. Uh, um, so, so all you guys that watch up, like follow ISM, and even watch our Google Hangouts that Paul and Seb put up kindly each week. <coughs> so they're talking about a, um, a 1 to 72 two hour build. So if you want to see that, that um, I think they're uh, from the time of this recording. So just look at the date um, on the published date on this thing. And the thing that it's not going to be next weekend because I'm pretty sure they're talking about Mike's going away, uh, Colin's going away on, on, on holiday or camping trip or so. I'm not too sure he won't be available. But um, so when ev everyone's ready, I guess to who can be there because I know um, one of our other members is a he's a truck driver, so he he's always away. He's never there. And then, yeah, and obviously, everyone's got kids, and yeah, you know how it goes. It's put your own life in that perspective, and yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty tough to sort of all get together and do this one thing. But they're talking about a um, a two hour uh, just two hour quick build. It's not a competition, or um, you know, you don't win prizes or anything. It's just a bit of fun on Google on Google on the Hangouts. Um, Okay. Come on. Yeah, so I said that hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be a couple of weeks and fingers crossed again. I won't be working or it won't be. Uh, I've got to go to a wedding, I think, on the 6th six, six of next month. So, yeah, I won't. I won't be on the hangouts. I won't be. You know, I won't even be home. So it's in another country town. So it'll be. Actually, looking forward to that. It's going to be a cracking party. It's going to be really, really good. This is it. Here. I've a mum with a bit too. I'm just yeah, pretty tired. Just being at work all day. So hence why I'm going this way. And it's more, I guess, one on one. Bit more personal compared to my normal videos, where I'm, um, where it's like you, know, you say something, oh no, I messed up, cut, go back, do it again, no, oh, yeah, cut. In this way, yeah, I just get these videos out. But getting my knife. Um, oops, slashed my hand off. So what we got here? I'm just cut her open. I really haven't really had a look at this yet either, so you know, I'll probably end up doing a proper review when I get time before I actually start building it. So and so far, while I've had the sticky beak at it, uh, I'll just clean some of this crap out of there so it's in space. Clean over there. All right, so clear parts. I'm going to leave them in there because, um, yeah, just because they're so small, they're going to either break off or they're, they're going to get scratched. But just from looking through the bag, I mean, I don't expect glass 
in one semi T scale. I'm gonna I'm gonna expect it to be, you know, um, a bit blurry through there, but as long as the glass is good and there's no scratches on it, that's all I really care about. Um, some people are really fussy. I mean, it's good to be fussy, if, especially if you buy expensive kits. So if you spend like $130, $160, even more on a kit, even $80 on a kit, you're going to expect um, the, the clear parts to be really, really of, you know, good quality. Um, decals themselves, I think, whatever they Yeah, so the decals themselves, they're a bit how you going. No, I'm a bit, but like once again, I only paid twelve bucks for this kit, so I'm not going to expect um, you know awesome cartograph decals or you know just awesome decals. It's as long as they work and they they go on nice and they don't split and crack and break and. Oh, yeah, the other Marie Morale of with decals. That's all. I, that's another thing. That's all I care about as well, especially on a on a small, small cheap kit. Um, and and if you if you kick and scream about you know, crappy decals in a in a cheap kit, then then um, you have problems. You have issues. So what have we got? We got the we've got two options here too. Adam, and, uh, what made me buy this? And I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and forth too, because um, what made me buy this, <coughs> buy this um, kit? Um, I was going through the April April's um, edition, 2014's issue of um, Tamiya's model, modeling magazine, and in there they've got a build article on the um, Messerschmitt ME1163B, 1, and I was actually quite intrigued. Um, um, well, the comment they call it. So I was actually quite intrigued about the actual build itself, and I have got documentaries um, on this particular plane, and it's really, really interesting. Um, like the story, the documentaries behind it, which has all always made me want to get one of these kits. But me being me. Um, because I can imagine, and it's like a ME ME two six two kit. It's not going to be cheap. So if I get, um, um, if I buy a kit of this particular plane, I want a decent one because it's actually a really really nice plane. And so what I'm what I'm gonna, what I'm doing is is I normally buy a small scale kit. So um, so like I've got the Mang Merkava. I've actually built the 172 scale of it, version of it, just to see how it all fit, get the colours right, and get yeah, get the feel for how everything goes together and the details. And you know, and you, I guess you can learn from your mistakes. You know, that didn't work all. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I say do it. But so you get two options here. You get um, what it looks like. I don't know which version's which. Okay, so. Don't kick my ass for it. You got, so you got two tops. One, one's um, I think one's a uh, the cockpit. So I guess you get two options for canopies as well. So you're gonna have sp um, spare um, plastic as well, glass clear parts for something else, which is pretty cool. Um, one's I think it sits higher. Um, okay, the prime example. So the box here. Okay, so you got the B version and the S version. Okay, so this one, uh, this one will be the B version, and I uh, give it a <laughs> and, and this one is the S version. So the B version is basically like a standard cockpit, right. and the S version kind of reminds me of like a high-end gunship. How the rear is actually higher than the front. Okay. And if you miss that, you can always go back and pause it and just have a quick look what the difference is. Um, then you got the bottom. So you got the bottom of the fuselage. So that'll be sitting like that. This bottom bit here. 
and then um, you got actually for one to seventy two you've actually got quite a nice looking little dash. Um, it's not just a piece of blank um, plastic like which a lot of one to seventy two kits say you just whack a decal on there. Um, so you can see if it wants to focus, if it wants to be a girl. Um, you can kind of see it. But it's actually the details are you know, nice and fine. Um, and then trying to work out which one's which. It'll be in instructions unless it's written on somewhere. Yeah, so one will be the front, one will be the back, I'd say. Or either that, they're a completely different dash altogether for the different for the B version and the S version. Now you got the Yeah, you got the tail. I think it's the tail, yep. So that'll be the tail. Um, left and right side. You've also got a couple of seats in here, which is pretty cool. Nice little seats. And that's, this is actually quite a really nice kit. Surprisingly, like, um, I'm actually quite happy with this kit. Now, uh, the landing gear, or the, or the back tail wing, or the, sorry, the tail wheel. Um, I think once again, they give you, hang on. Mm. Alright, so you've got two different options. So, yeah, so you have a spare wheel in here as well, uh, spare parts. Uh, you've got the wheels, and they will be for. Um, they actually connect to something. Let's see if we can find it. That might be it there. Because that's for the bogey. Nope. So that might be it there, so that's where your wheels say may go on here. The wheels go on the side here like that. And then there's your tow hitch. There's the tow motor itself. There's the tow motor there. Nicely detailed. You gotta remember all this is one to seventy two, so I yeah, so don't think, oh no, this, this kit's crap, it's got no detail, you remember how small it is, and it's, for the kit of its size, it's actually jam-packed with detail, once you, well, once again, once you highlight it, put all the washers in, and appreciate and everything, it's, it's going to be a really, really nice model. Um, you got your, well, I guess you like your mini, mini tractor, tractor treads on the back, or caterpillars on the back, and they will slide in here. Got one on each side, and then nothing that's too hard. I don't know how this goes together. Just go down to two halves, maybe. And I'll look different. So then this will be a. Hmm. Okay. And so that goes on top of here. And that will be on the bottom, okay. So that's it there. And then you've got your cockpit. You've got two different cockpits. Obviously, your B and S version. So you've got one there and one there. And you've got joysticks. And you got. I'd say they would be for the bottom somewhere. I'm guessing. I'm only just guessing. So that's probably for the bottom of the fuselage. There's your wings, top and bottom. Um, what is that? And who knows what that is? You got ailerons. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you've got ailerons here. Other ones. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to this kit. Yeah, so would I recommend this kit? Yeah, I would. 
Um, it's if you're, if you're after just a, a quick little build, packed with detail, um, for you know, for the money you spend. Like I mean, like once again, it's, this cost me twelve dollars. So yeah, I'd, if you want something just to fund a build, something quick. Um, and you haven't got much space on your shelf or anything like that, you just want something to fill it in there, yeah, this will, and you, you want something different too, you know, like, this is pretty different, you know, pretty different for one of 72 kits, normally just a plane, but you get, like, the tow motor and the towing system and all that with it, so, yeah, give it a go. Right, so, yeah, I just think I'm just going to, um, do some painting now, so I've got all the these were the ordnance for the for the SU thirty four. There's a lot, and yeah, just disregard those three there. That's the landing gear. That's all the landing gear. So you got yeah missiles and heaps and heaps and heaps. Don't care if I put this over here. Alright, so yeah, I'm just gonna zone out and do some building. Okay, gotta find something like that. So I'm gonna all clad this. Um, so instead of Having to drag my air compressor outside, and setting it up, displaying them black primers, all that blah blah blah. Um, I'm going to actually I'm just going to spray this with um, spray this with the layer of black, black polyurethane primer. So I can get some of that. New and new, new, new. And then what I'm thinking is I'll use some. Um, if I still got any, let me check. Yeah, I'm going to use some umbral gloss coat. So once all the primer's down and dry, I'm going to gloss coat it with some. Um, Humbrol, and I'm only try practicing on this too because it's um, you know, just going to see how um, how it works. And if it's a fail, you know, I'll just strip it down and you know, I'll just start again. So, all right. So, and then yeah, and then once that gloss coat's dry, I'll give it a day or so for that gloss to dry, um, and then. I'll hit it with some more parts. Let's say get. Next. Chicken time. Okay. So. Lay down some paper, some shitty old paper. And then that's just a uh, Vallejo airbrush cleaner. Yeah, it's 50-50 because um, I think it's just a waste using it neat. And it does the job. Like it's having any problems yet. The only blockage I had since I've had this is because I put that paint in there yesterday just way too thick. So, and people do say you don't thin primer but um, because I've had this Vallejo now for a while. Yeah, I just I just thin out a little bit guys, it's not much. It's saying like a drop or a drop or two. Um, Okay, I'm going to be careful here that I don't pop this cap open too quick and 
<laughs> Shit goes everywhere. Yeah, like I don't expect, and also I, mean, I do not expect any bills on tonight. Um, so hopefully, and I really want to get some more of the Aussies out there. So um, and there aren't too many out there at the moment. There's um, yeah, like I, and to be honest, I don't even think there is a. Um, Google Hangouts, um, like the one I joined with with Paul and all the boys. It's predominantly guys from the UK, and yeah, got got a few guys from the US, and and so far, I'm the only bloke from the, from Australia. Obviously, you know, because I'm stupid enough to get up at that time in the morning. Um, it's you know seven o'clock, I think, over there, and try work it out. Um, yeah, it'd be about seven o'clock. So Paul's pretty much exactly nine hours behind me. So when he when he starts his hangouts, it's normally half past seven at night over there. But for me, it's half past four in the morning. So yeah, it, it um, normally when you see me, if you, and if you guys do watch the hangouts, um, and I do sound tired or my eyes are hanging out of my head, yeah, now you know it's, it's half past four in the morning. So. But you know, so it's it's worth it. Um, like it's good just to have someone to talk to while you're building, um, and and um, and just ask questions or even just yeah, just laugh, have a laugh. Not always building. Sometimes we're just sitting there having a cup of coffee or or someone have a beer and. So yeah, remember what I was saying before. Yeah, I really, really would love to get um, an Aussie um, Aussie G Plus hangout. There is another guy that that I follow as well, and um, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry, dude. Like it's it's been a while. I'm, um, it's been a while since I haven't really been watching too many modeling videos either. It's um, I've been watching a lot of documentaries. Um, so living out where I live, like I'm way out in the sticks, and I'm either I've got to get a satellite um, set top box put in and watch TV and. Um, to, or to watch TV or I can just use the internet and just watch documentaries, watch what I want when I want sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so I'm pretty, pretty behind with all the videos. Yeah, so I've thinned this black out a little bit too, so. Yeah, Get a little spray, misty sprays. And I'm just holding on to just a cheap, crappy ruler that I bought from the news agency. I think it'll be, I don't know, I think it's from Woolworths. Um, 70 cents, I think I paid for these. And I'm using as well, like obviously the rulers as well, so you can spin them over and, and they come in handy. But then I'm buying another two more. so. But and then just a bit of 3M. I think it's sticky tape. I'm getting all this on. It's just 3M. They're blue stuff. Painters tape. Um, multi surfaces. So yeah. So that's the low tech stuff. Ooh, accent. Like I got that from I think Hardware Store. Just the same thing, but it's a very low tech. I think it comes in a purple one, which is even less tech. Um, and it's like this stuff's less sticky, um, not as sticky as the Tamiya um, stuff. What do they call their Kamoi tape? So, so and this 3M stuff's pretty good, nice and wide. Um, 
and it sticks pretty good and doesn't leave residue on your models and stuff. So, compressor. It's always checking the spray spray pattern every now and then. I'm just taking my time tonight too, fellas. It's not really in a rush. I'm not trying to squeeze um, a video in a certain time frame. It's So I am trying it this way because I did. Someone put a comment up this morning or a question up this morning on um, the international scale modeler. Well, it would have been last night. I read it this morning, pretty much when I wake up. Um, it's going to work. And someone was asking. Um, they're just about to to. Um, Start using old clouds for the first time, and um, do they have to use the um, the primer black base that that all clad sells for their metallics? And some people says yes. Um, some people say no. You don't have to. Um, but I'm pretty sure um, you can use any black glossy base. But maybe the all clad um, primer works better because it's made for that paint, I guess. So I am guess what I'm doing here, just for myself, so I know that if it does work or not, um, and if it doesn't work, and then you, know, you can just strip it down and start again. So nothing fancy, I'm just doing the black face, uh, black undercoat with primer, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just make sure that black's not in there really good. So that's sliding too much. Quick pass. So let that dry, then probably sp spray the um, gloss coat on tomorrow or something. Just let it dry, and then spray it out. Just spray the primer out. Unless I've got anything else to do. Hang on, just double check if I waste it out. Yep, that's pretty good. Okay, so here we go. Just using a pretty old piece of paper. In there, the cup may fall. Um, and then using a shitty old brush. That's this one, I guess. Shears. Scrub. I 
obviously being polyurethane, if anything is dried, you're going to get like crumbs and bits of dried paint on there. So I highly recommend that you don't spray it out. Get the crappy old cut. Foam in there. And so if you want to clean this out. Out. It's just a homemade airbrush cleaner that I made. It's just a glass jar with a um, dust mask on it with a silicon tip and yeah, just a makeup pad thing, just hot glued on, on the arse of it. Um, yeah, it works. It's just somewhere to get, get rid of the paint. You don't spray big models and you know, many. If I do use all clads or clear um, enamel paints and stuff, it normally spray it outside anyway. So that's what I'm going to do now, so I don't waste um, waste. That's the thinner, the cleaners. Um, I'll try to find where I put it. There you go. Um, Get my nice probe not back here. Just the way the box down. My Windex. Um, yeah, so if you're lucky enough, I'll get this stuff from Big W. Well, the Aussies don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, just a big bottle of Windex, five litres of the stuff. And it cost me, um, I think, when I had it or the time of purchase, it was about 12 bucks. That's some dirt cheap. So, oh, it's just, you can't thin acrylic paint cell it like it, it doesn't hurt. Um, it doesn't like, obviously, it doesn't like the Tammy paints, or Tammy paints don't like it. Um, but yeah, the Vallejo's, um, the Citadel paints work with it. More or less just your water, water based um, acrylic paints, not your chemical based ones. So, I can just give it a spray out the index. If you've seen my fat Greek wedding, it's the old man. Hey, Windex cures. You've got to use his Windex on everything. Pimples and, yep, got to clean their brushes too. So. Strips paint off um, your models. So if you've got like, um, you try and strip miniatures in that bag. It just takes longer. Like, it, it does take a while for it to, like, it depends on how long the paint is. Like, if, um, I don't don't know what it's like with enamel paint, um, so I couldn't really tell you if it works or not. So, but and I do know with acrylics, if you just yeah, you just paint a model and yeah, the next day or something, you know, you're not happy with it, you just chuck it in the container with some Windex in it, and it does strip the paint off. But obviously, the longer the paint's been on the model, so if you're trying to strip a model that's had paint on it for like you know, two years or a year or something like that, it's it's going to take a while and takes a bit of scrubbing, but you know, fairly new model that you painted, it normally comes off quite easily. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to do some pre shading on this um, SU34. That again, so we keep that close and handy. So, what we're going to do is look, we've got my Sparmax SP35C. I've uh, had this for a few years now. Um, it's got a 0.2 needle in it, so it's more or less my um, fine, fine weight. But this thing here came off a one of those cheap Chinese airbrushes and and at pure luck, pure chance that it screws on the back, screwed on the back of the Sparmax here, and um, yeah, so it's got a needle adjuster on there, so I can yeah, either you know, cut, locks it right off, or you can adjust it. But I don't really use it too much. But it's it's good when you've got thin paint and you're doing panel line work. So. And so what we're going to do is 
and um, use this gun for a while since, since buying the Awada Neo. It's I find myself using that more, but I mean, there's much more to be done. Uh, open up, making sure that all the gunk is out of it. Make this. <coughs> Now, what I was thinking, um, I was going to use a black, um, a, a black, oh no, sorry, I, I was going to use a very dark blue, a very dark blue, like with black in it, to um, panel, um, pre shade this thing. But because it's going to be like a few. Um, Layers of camouflage on here. If you know what the Russian Russian planes look like, it's it's a color scheme using blues. Um, so so I think I am going to go black with this one, just because there's going to be a few layers of paint. Of if I can do it with two layers on top of the pre shading, two two and a half, yeah, I'll get away with it because I don't really pre shade too often. So I'm still pretty new at this myself. So either this is going to work, or it's going to fail. But, um, I think I need a bigger piece of paper. So, Right, so the tail. What I might try. This is either going to work again, or it's not. This turn table from here. I'm just going to use one of these um, F clamps. These things are great. I love these things. So, so what I'm doing here, so just on the bottom. Because all of this, or from in there, across there, it's all one piece except for this bit here. Um, it's going to be pretty strong. So. And what I want to do now, you don't do this so one hand. So, what I'm going to do is so I'm just going to clamp it off there. Just doesn't work. Okay. Clamp it off there like that. Okay, so that way. Like that. Mm -hmm. right. One day. Um, I'll do I'm gonna check and spray it. I'm not gonna blow it over. Yeah, that's not cool. Um For this, just bear with me. I'll be back in a second to go through my paint.
actually. I'm just going to use this. This is why I bought it. So I had it actually. Yeah, I picked it up the other day. It's just um, Italia Air. And yeah, Tally Air, not Italeri. It's not this stuff. Okay, Italeri. Um, it is a artist acrylic. Um, so yeah, Tally Air. So yeah, I've just dropped a big, dirty um, fishing sinker in the bottom. It's probably, yeah, so big. So. Give it a shake up. Now I've spread it through the. I've spread it through the. Um, uh, sorry guys, just let me adjust this camera so I'm not talking to the neck. Um, I've spread it through the uh, Iwata and I've thinned it out a little bit. It does spray nice. Um, what I am worried about spraying through this because I've. Um, it's a smaller needle. We'll find a find a needle. So, um, and I don't really know what the pigments like compared to you know actual hobby paint itself. So whether it's a thick, bigger pigment, I don't know. So um, time will tell. So we're going to um, Homebrew, so I'm just going to be my homebrew thinners here. Um, could just use water, but I've got flow aid in this, and I've also got um, retarder in it. So hopefully this works. Right, so I'm going to whack a bit of you know, I'm going to try and get through this Windex just in case this. Um, Next time, the reaction. Yeah, so just in case has any weird reaction with this. Um, yeah. As usual, always um, just a quick here, love it. The new cotton wool. Yeah, it's my old Q-tips, cotton tips, just jammed in there on the bottom, so it makes a triangle, so it holds it. And it just basically, yeah, just I'm just spray into it and don't get too much spray in my face. So, and then give this a shake. I've also, and this is just trials too. Like um, went to the art shop the other day and Laurel down at Magic Brush. I just tell her what I was using it for. She, you know, basically just said, you know, I like this paint. I'm going to go and buy the whole set. Um, see if it works. Because once you seal them off with the um, polyurethane, or once you seal it off with your, um, your clear coats, it's normally all right. So, it's a drop of bottle style. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 10 and a half. Didn't quite make it. Let's see. Um, getting a small crappy brush, which is. Nope. Where is it? Where are you? Shitty brush. Yeah. Yeah. So many shitty rushes. What are we going to do? So, just going to test the spray. It's too thin. I'm just going to have some more paint. Simple as that. So don't get stress. See a lot of these videos. See a lot of these things. I'm doing it this way too because a lot of these things, um, instead of having to make a video just purely for this. Um, you know, whoever watches the video, you can always skip through it, and um, I can show a lot more tips doing it this way while I'm on the fly, explain it a bit better. But there's always going to be something that I'm going to forget when I'm making a 
video or I don't go through it because um, so I'm, I'm making a video just for that particular thing. And this way I can just, yeah. So that's there. Another, another tip. I only do this, but I wouldn't recommend this for beginners. If you're a beginner, don't do this, get comfortable. I normally take the cap off the end of the airbrush, which protects your needle, which is generally a big no no. But you can see the spray difference with the cap on and without the cap. So that big fat line on the bottom that looks like a coat hanger is with the cap on. That little fine line on top is without the cap on. So without the cap, you know. So it's, um, so far spraying nice, taking on a piece of paper. And, if it's, and you'll see if it's starting to spider like web everywhere, it's too wet. Not really ready to go. I'm actually going to bring the camera in, guys, so let's see what I'm doing. Alright. So, so this is going to be just a thing like that. You can probably see what I'm doing. So, what we're doing now is um, basically, we're just tracing all over the recess lines. Um, obviously, you know, something going to be that small, you're not, you can't actually draw a tiny little square. You just basically spray like a dot. Right. Like so. What I'm going to do is instead of spraying, I'm actually going to have this piece of paper here handy so I can just clean the tip off. Alright, so. Here we go. All for nothing. Yeah, you can see that. Now that on camera looks black as like it looks really, really, really dark. Um, and it's it's not as dark as it was it looks on camera. Well that's what I can see anyway, so I guess once it gets um, once you watch it in YouTube um, later on you can um, Oh we got a viewer. Um, yeah got a you wanna ask any questions um, feel free like I'll I'll just pop the questions and answer thing. If you want to, if you want to join too, just swing us, swing us a line, and we can. And all I'm doing here is I'm just um, on the line with um, appreciating. So. I think I'm mainly from what's going on this as well. Alright, so. Yeah, so if I can get, what I'm trying to aim at is I'm trying to get, um, ooh, hopefully I can get about, well at night, I'm, I'm building pretty much every night, but actually trying to film and edit, that's that's the killer for me, and it's probably a killer for a lot of the YouTubers out there, unless, I mean, unless you've got no job and you're <laughs> unemployed, you can make videos all day long, but I think while I'm building, I can just, crap along too, I can just, um, make the air as well I'm doing, 
have to see what I'm doing, I have to see the builds in progress because that's the only way I'm going to be able to do build videos, guys. It's um, yeah, I just don't get the time for that. I'm just going to chuck a little bit more thin in here. It's already thinned out, so I'm not worried about putting dry paint up the back of the gun. It's just, yeah, you can see here how thick that is. So a bit more. All right, so here we go. Let's try again. Get that off. You don't want to be trying to be turning it, don't worry if you want that new, it's just pre shading so once you put the layer of paint on top it's going to blend it out there. You don't need to trace around everything, it's, if there's a lot to, um, for example, you've got a really long oblong line, just basically just fill in the middle, make it dark. Just see how fine you get that line once you take the um, the cap off. But just means you've got to be really, really careful. Um, what I'm actually going to do? Put some airbrush in here. And the Tammy stuff and this shot glass. Turn in there. Just get that to clean up the needle. Clean the tip out. There you go. Who is watching out there? If you want to ask a question, hey, hey, feel free to ask a question.
So this is yeah, really slow, painful process, but it's well worth it in the end. You just got to be very careful when you put the next laser pad on, because what happens is if you get carried away with it, um, you just cover up all this work. So you just yeah, really thin paint, guys. It's um, take your time. And if you get bored of doing it, yeah, put it down and either do something else and yeah. That's just one of those things where you've got to be in the mood to do it. So if you missed it before, um, just using just plain old um, artist acrylics, I'm not using um, model paint at all. It's just for pretty shading, so I'm not really too fussed about it. So, all these lines down here, you can just do them pretty quickly. The only disadvantage filming these things live, it's it's not like I can go back and go, um, you know, here's one I prepared earlier, fellas. I'm not actually going to do the whole thing, but then it does show you how long it actually takes. It's not, um, Stay within the lines. All you're doing is you're just tracing or have all the recess kind of work. Um, a quick stick. Quick um, saucer around the area, making sure you haven't missed anything. So, having these lights shining straight on here doesn't help either. Um, what is it? It's just a Sparmax SP35C, mate. It's just a cheap, cheap one. I've had this for years. Um, it's got a 0.2 needle in it. Um, it's it's pretty much. I sort of um, was using just your cheap Chinese airbrush, and I still use them. Like if um, if I spin it, spin it around, I'll whip down here. Like, then the airbrush is there, and like, like I only use cheap ones for my enamels because I rarely use them, so I'm not going to go blowing you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks on a um, good airbrush. 
and um, no, James, it's you, James. No, um, yeah, so that's all I use, buddy. Just a Trimax, little cheapy. And then I've only just picked up that Iwata Neo that you see me use every now and then. I've only had that. Um, I haven't had that for long at all, James. But yeah, it's it's more of a multi-purpose um, airbrush. The other one, this one's just fine. I've started to use this for my fine work now. Um, this for a while, actually. And and for all the guys watching back later on YouTube, um, once this is uploaded, um, a lot of the a lot of the time that actually well, lately that I've been doing all my builds has been. When I've been on the Google Plus Hangouts um, with Paul and all the boys, and and you too, James, uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, so obviously this camera's tied up, um, so I can't really film while I'm using the other one for my webcam. So, so this is the next best thing. And this way, I don't have to upload the thing onto my computer or or record it and then upload it to Windows Movie Maker. That's what I actually use to um, make all my videos. Um, and then and then once that's loaded, then I just save it. And if it's a half an hour video, that can take me up to you know forty or whatever. So if it's a half an hour video. It normally takes about half an hour to save, and then to upload on YouTube, you know, half an hour video can take anything up to. Um, it can take anything up to, um, you know, five hours. Yeah, so it helps us down view up. James, his computer's frozen. And he will be back. Actually, I might put a link up here. Um, copy, paste. Oops. Oop. Copy. No, decade. Copy. I'm going to um, relocate that. Um, 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 um. So is it copy? I'm just going to share this on the same page as well.
Hang on. Hang So, getting back to it. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down. And I'm going to adjust the drums. Do now with these, she's kind of in the front of the plane. Like that. So she ain't going anywhere. And I can keep painting for that. Alright, so getting a little bit of tower. Test. Getting there. In there, you know, sometimes it's called window lean, that's it's just window cleaner. And, uh, so, dip it in there. And I'm just going to use that to on the tip of the needle. I don't know if you can hear it. It's actually blowing a guy like this. Hmm. 
And then give the tip of the needle a bit of a wipe. Then we're just making sure that you don't stress if you haven't done it like it's, it's not the end of the world if you miss it. Gun down, back in the mount, and just going to be adjusting the clamps because I want to get the tail. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yo, what's up? What's up? Hey, Hendrik. What's going, buddy? Not much. I just saw that you're painting your uh, your SU here. Just wanted yeah. to say hi. Yeah, no, you're right. No, I'm just trying a new format out for my channel. Um, okay. So instead of trying to film and trying to edit the damn thing, um, life right there. Yeah, I can just film while I'm going, while I'm building, and um, yeah. <laughs> Hey, what happened there? My camera stopped working, the eagle. No. I didn't actually I didn't even know you I didn't realise you played um gridiron until I went to your Facebook I page did. the other day. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I used to play years ago. I used to play I think I was <laughs> under uh, under eighteens. <laughs> did you play Aussie rules football? No, American gridiron. Played club in oh, Australia. Cool. Yeah, I was um Oh shit! What did I play? Um, uh, nah. <laughs> I can't remember the position I used to play. Um, defensive <laughs> back. Yeah, defensive uh, back. Jesus, yeah. I hate you. Why? Because you was a quarterback. No, it was a quarterback. Oh, yeah, in. yeah, yeah, defensive back. He used to play for the was it Northside Redskins. <laughs> Racist. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the crappiest team in the league. We won one game all season. <laughs> oh well, at least you won a game. Yeah, there's our there second teams last out there game. That don't win it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you're still, still having, still on sick leave then. No, no, no! I'm finished work. It's um. Oh yeah, it's 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 late in the evening. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, it's twelve past eight. Jesus! So you're you're eight hours in front. That's a lot. Oh, so you're oh, so you're only eight hours behind me. Oh, okay, I'm trying to work it out. Yeah, so... it's like ten minutes past twelve right now. Oh yeah. And you're still up, what, oh, during the day, lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably get myself something to eat really soon. Where are you? You at home? You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you work? Student. You still a student. Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a lazy bastard. No. Yeah, I thought you worked. And I was like, hey, uh, what are you doing? I do work, but uh, only uh, a couple of days a week. <laughs> <laughs> so you're appreciating now. Yeah, that's something hideous. That's why, I don't, that's why I don't build airplanes. Because um, I hate appreciating. I appreciated that Panther. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, just appreciated it, but it's it's nowhere near as much um, appreciating on the Panther. You just you can be a lot more. You know, you, you have a bigger spray pattern. Where I've actually taken the needle cap off the airbrush to get a really fine pattern on it, a thin pattern. Okay. Yeah. 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 Did you see what I bought today? Um, where is it? Oh, uh, I think I saw that. Yeah. Let me yeah. let me remember the the one seventy second scale Messerschmitt ME one six three and the Airfix crew, right? Yeah, twelve bucks. Twelve dollars. Oh, that's that's, all that's, that's cheap. Yeah, very cheap. And that those um those Luftwaffe um personnel, they're like ten dollars. Like you get like forty three of them. No, they're air fixed though. So yeah. <laughs> oh, they're just for diorama, like you know, little, little soft plastic men. They remind me of you know, these things, same type of plastic, as little as little toy yeah. men. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're just for dioramas. No, twelve bucks for yeah. the model and. There's. 
Yeah, 50 cents for a man, just a bit of decoration. That's a good bargain. It is. That's a good bargain, man. Anyway, I'm going to leave you alone again. Yeah, I'll leave you and good. And for some food. Yeah, man. Alright. Alright, catch you later. Anyway, man. see you later. Bye, Clem. See you, bud. And that was Hendrick from Modeling 101. One of the regulars on the Hangouts. So. What we're doing is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-show all this, and then um, the actual nose I think from here onwards. But if I can, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just yeah. So what I'll do is, nope, that's not the plane. I'll see if I can bring up a picture. Um, where's the pictures? Uh, pictures. SU twenty seven. Might be downloads. Hang on. Bear with me for a minute, guys. Um, oh, there it is. That's probably the best picture I've got. So I'm just going to screen share this for a minute. Um, um, screen share. That one. <laughs> Yeah, so that is pretty much the color scheme that I'm going for. So if you see the front of the plane on the nose, I'm pre-shading. I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. Probably not. Um, but at the nose of the plane in front of the windscreen there, you see where it's that light gray color. I'm pre-shading it now. So I'm going to do... Um, put the grey on, just the shading still to come through, even though it's over a very light blue surface. Um, and is and which is why I chose to um, which is why I chose to go with the light blue because it's almost a, a grey. Um, so I'm starting off with a very, very light colour. If I went dark and that's gonna be just yeah, pretty hard to try and get the um, um, light colors over dark, it, they won't pop as much, so which is why I went for that. So, what I'm going to do, uh, so just make sure. So it's going to pop on its nose like that. Heaps and heaps of panel lines that are close together. 
So don't even bother about tracing them out. Just sort of. Like I'm not very, I'm not too anal about the panel lines. It's, it's um, you know what I mean by that is, is um, I'm not trying to get be really, really neat. Like I am trying to be neat, but not where it's um, the lines have to be straight and as thin as I can get it. Okay. Yeah, just try and move the mold around to you guys while you're painting, like, just so your hands are comfortable. Um, as soon as you start being uncomfortable is when you start getting fatigued and start losing interest. Um, if you're not comfortable, you're not enjoying it. Um, so yeah, which is why I love these stands. You can just adjust, maybe, adjust your model in any position that you want. And they, they hold, like I can turn this thing upside down, I can let go um, of this thing and still hold the model and still being careful. So, I'm just going to give this, I'm going to this thing a bit. Alright. So, I'm going to turn around. Making sure that you get everything. Try and get everything if you can. Um, even just it's a little dot, a little circle. Just um, the more contrast you can get in your paintwork at the end, you know, the more effective it's going to be. So you get more of them done, it starts to get a lot harder to see where all the panel lines are. Which is why you go stop them. Now I'm not too phased about this, like it's just gonna do it anyway, but it's gonna be either a dark grey in there or maybe a black. I haven't really checked the colour call out yet, but that's Go down 
Uh, and don't be afraid to go in and mess with that. I'm not going to hurt it. So, got another squizzy. Another up here. Yeah, so I and mean, then let me know what you think about these videos, guys. Too like when um, and this is I'm talking to the YouTubers, the actual guys that are watching this later back on YouTube. But if you're if you're watching now as well, um, even getting feedback, what you think? Um, is it is it a waste of time? Um, because I've got a lot of builds coming up. Especially the helicopter, the black horse I'll be going with. Um, the, the little time they do spend on it, like even I can make um, even quick videos. And, but I just don't have the time to upload the videos, so I may as well just record them. And they go up pretty much instantly once I shut the thing down. So. Yeah, look at that. Still do the bottom yet too. <laughs> oh my god. What did I decide to do this for? Should have done a one to one one forty four scale. <laughs> oh well. That's that's model building. Nothing this to see much and then this needle start to block up a bit. That's why we do it. Before we punish ourselves, and that's a good way for me to relax after work, wind down. Can't sit there and drink copious amounts of beer after work like some of my co workers. It's, um, I just easier, it's cheaper, better for your health. Unless you, unless you sniff paint, but. <laughs> Oh, I've got some tiles. Tiles are pretty tricky to do, so. That'd be the neatest job. But, um,. So where the where the rudders I think um, where the rudders the ailerons on the back there I think they're gonna be the biggest gap so I think I'm just gonna go over it and make these even darker. But I dare say in real life it's gonna cast more of a shadow than a panel on wood so Had a magic button. Now go here. Here's the rest of it done. And so, this being the first live build, I might on um. YouTube channel. Obviously, I'm learning from my mistakes. What I could be doing, what I shouldn't be doing. Um, I 
think now I can just rename the video as before I even start, but I didn't even know, honestly, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I was just going to just film myself building. Um, ended up doing a small mini bloody kit review. Um, bit of a bench update, what I've got on the go, <laughs> why, it's, why it's sitting on the shelf. So, yeah. Just, yeah. So the next video I do is this guy with the issue 34. Um, part 2 or whatever. Well, I'm thinking it won't be the bottom just yet. So I kind of need a smoke break. Um, so before I sort of put the airbrush down, I might actually put a drop, drop of retarding in this paint too, just to stop it from going off a bit while it's sitting in the rack. Little, little dots here. Some sort of dots. Oh, so our view was back. Might be James, it might be somebody else. Uh, so I do have the. Um, I do have the question box open as well, so if you want to ask me anything you know anything, feel free to ask. That's one reason why I started my YouTube channel, because I just want to start sharing what I know with other people in the community. Going back in the day, we used to buy a magazine and read it. But now, if you want to know something, you just talk to the bloke on the screen or talk to your mates. It's awesome. The bloke invented Google Plus. Must be rolling around in laughter. All the money he's making. Um, so, that's that. I'm just going to do. Back to the tub, and if I, yeah, I'm not really going to do the side or the bottom um, straight away. I'm just going to think, going to kick back, have a break, have a smoke. But don't worry, I ain't going anywhere. So I'm just going to show you the top what I've actually done. Um, Idea and so that's pretty much it. Uh, that's it. Looks like a complete mess. Um, you know, like oh no, the paint's worn, but it's not. It's only the base coat. A lot of people like a okay, and okay. I'm just going to re rephrase on everything that's happened, um, starting from yesterday, since um, yesterday's Google Plus hangout. I was actually just gluing all the all the bomb racks or the um, ordnance racks under the wings. I think that's what I was doing on the G Plus hangouts. Um, I had most of the fuselage glued together, all the wings and the, the tail glued. And I and last night or well, yesterday on the weekend, it it was pretty much an all nighter. I I wanted to get a lot of this done. It um, and more or less too, I had plenty of sleep and, and I had it's just had having a really, really good time building this thing. A lot of fun. Um, it's I've wanted to build this kit for a while, so it was pretty much Google Plus hangouts on Saturday. Um, I think I went to bed starting Friday night. 
Um, um, while I'm talking, I'll just put some stuff in here. Um, yeah, just got a bit of uh, Atelier uh, retarder as well, acrylic, just artist all, um, artist acrylics retarder. Works with your model paint too, so that's on your craft shop, art, art supplies. But um, yeah, it was Friday night. No, I went to work Friday. Um, and I'm just gonna stop talking for a second. So I don't want to put too much retard in here. Um, yeah, went to work Friday, and then after work, I pretty much just did what I had to do around the house, and then from, from about six o'clock onwards, I um started building this thing because it was only I think it was just the um, the dash or the, the cockpit itself or the seats and everything that I had to finish assembling and paint um, and then from about 8 o'clock, oh, I, I, I think I was building till about 1 o'clock in the morning I think went to bed, had a <laughs> had about 3 hours sleep um, got a message from the boys from the UK so there was a hangout, and I decided to sleep until about six. So I just need my sleep, so I had a yeah, squat or sleep. Um, woke up at six thirty, joined the hangout. People were crapping on the hangout till about oh, it must have been I think eleven o'clock, eleven thirty, I think it was in the morning. Um, I think the last couple of boys were. I think it was. Oh shit! Who was it? I think it was Ant. Um, Wes, I think, was there till the end. Um, and I think maybe Cohen, I think maybe Mike was there till the end as well. Well, that might have been, I can't remember. I think we had another hang on the weekend and on Sunday as well. well. Sunday morning for me. But yeah, 11.30, that finished up. And then I, I continued on building this thing till, um, oh shit, one, two, I reckon it would have been. Three o'clock in the afternoon, because I had no plans, I had nowhere to go, and um, so I just thought, yeah, bugger it, save money. So I just stayed home and kept building this. Fell asleep, or well, crashed out around about three o'clock in the afternoon, half past three or something. Woke up at eight o'clock at night. That was Saturday night, and then um, woke up at eight o'clock at night and shit. And that was the all nighter. That's where I stayed up all night Saturday night. Um, till I think I think the uh, I think the next hangout was I think that started about half past four in the morning. Um, so I did, you know, I did see um Paul talk, Paul from ISM talking to Sebastian um, Dutch Modeling on the Facebook chat that all all us guys have. So you gonna start the hangout? No, you can. Are you? Are you? So and then that yeah, that went back and forth for about five minutes. That was pretty funny actually. So and at that time I was making a cup of coffee, and then um, yeah, and I joined probably about five o'clock. So half an hour just to yeah, have a shower and shit like that. And that went till oh, that was about six hours there. Easy six six and a half hours of um, speaking crap again and building. Um, and I've actually got the link below on my last on this update on the thing I uploaded that yesterday. Um, and I'm just roll this mate while I'm talking. Um, so to see me build this, or and it's not full screen here. That's like I'll be you know, in a tiny little box down you know, in the bottom of the screen here somewhere, building in the odd time where I talk or. You know, burp or make a donkey noise or whatever <laughs> is when um, yeah my screen enlarges and you sort of see what I'm actually doing. So if you if you're watching the video on a phone, you've got no hope of seeing what I'm doing. Um, the only chance you've got is watching it on a um, computer monitor, or if you're lucky enough to watch it on a big TV. But even then, you know the screen's only the size of a matchbox. Um, so yeah, you'll get you get some idea on what we do, which is why I shared it. Um, it's and I think the link you can only watch it because I'm pretty sure it's only got an 18 plus um, 
it's got an 18 plus barrier barrier on it. So if you're not 18, yeah, you can't watch it because the only reason we do make these things 18 plus guys is yeah, just the language on here. It's not suitable for kids. Yeah, you don't want um, you know, you don't want some little kid hearing us swearing and yeah. Ah, it's good to watch. Really, really good to watch. So, what else is there? Um, what have I got coming up? Um, where did I put that bloody model? Um, 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 um. Where? Well, oh, here it is. Yeah, so, right at the start of this video. I was talking about, let's put this to the side for a minute, let it dry a bit. Um, I was talking about the boys, or the regular crew, um, that we normally hang out with on the G Plus Hangouts. And and if you're watching James, you, you'll know what we're talking about. Um, we're talking at all, I think Paul's one who's organising all. Um, he's actually talking about it, actually. It's talking about we're just going to do a a quick. It's going to be a two-hour build. Um, I'm not too sure on the rules at the moment. Um, I definitely know that uh, you're not allowed to use an airbrush. Um, you think you can only brush paint it. It has to be one to seventy-two scale. Um, so you basically you've got um, two hours to build it and paint it and done. But I'm not too sure whether, um, like I don't know all the rules. Just like don't quote me on all the rules. I'm just for what I remember. It was only brief discussion of what we had the other day or when I joined anyway. I probably missed out. Um, and I don't join the hangouts throughout the week too because you know being UK time they can sort of oh, all the time is pretty much similar. But um, you know, like I said earlier on, it's first thing in the morning when they normally start. I'm normally going to work on a weekday, which is why um, I mean, if there are any Aussies, Aussie like Aussie YouTubers out there even um, that want to start um, a regular hangout. I mean, yeah, swing me a comment down the bottom. Um, look me up on, even just send me a private message on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I just um, want to, I guess it's, um, what about, how am I going to say this? It's, um, okay, I'm trying to find the lighter at the same time as well as trying to decide what I'm going to say. Obviously, okay. Obviously, all the products that the American Jews and the products um, that the the guys in Europe use. I mean, your brand names are different. I mean, there are some things that that we can get that you can get. I mean, like for me to get um, Pledge Future Shine was really really hard, um, and and it was so damn expensive. I mean, I was I was talking to um, Michael Campbell, you, as you guys know him as um, Cohen, um, Mike Cohen on his, his YouTube channel, he was telling me um, over in Canada that a bottle of Pledge Future Shine, and I'm still looking for this damn light off. There it is. Um, a bottle of Pledge Future Shine costs six bucks, and now that's that's awesome. Like six dollars, that's pretty good for me to get it over here. Shit, it cost me like twenty some dollars for a bottle, only because it's not made here in Australia. It's it's really really hard to get. I mean, we can't. I mean, I can't walk into a supermarket or even some of our best hardware stores, like, like our warehouse, um, super, like our hardware superstores. Like they're massive. Like they're it's like a mini shopping center, and I can't even get it in there. The only stuff that even came close. Um, to that Pledge Future Shine with this was this stuff called uh, hang on, I'll get it out and I'll show you. Um, yeah, it was this stuff. It's called um, Cavits or Cavits, whatever it says. Um, it's a clear, it's 
It's a clear polyurethane for doors, windows, trims, and furniture, and it's water based. And it's really, really thick, and it looks like um, the only <laughs> the only way I can describe it is it looks like whale sperm, like it's just thick, but it does thin out to like it does thin out quite well. Um, I do have some here if I can find it. I'm just going to be careful and smash all the stuff in the same very different places. Um, yeah, so I've just thinned it out with a bit of I think it was just plain old water, I think. Um, or I may have even used my homebrew thinners to thin it out, but I thin it out too, like a, so it's airbrushable, and I just whack the little, like I do with all my paints, I just whack the little sinker in there, size zero fishing sinker in there. But I'm finding it that it's it's still too thin, so I may have to top it up with probably a uh, two or three mils of of um, neat um, gloss out of the tin again. But, and that was, I think they cost me $10. So, I mean, $10 for 250 mils, you might think that's expensive. But to thin that out, I'm probably getting, I mean, I'd probably get probably 750 mils um, of clear gloss out of this. Um, it doesn't work on enamel um, paints. Um, but it does, yeah, it will work. I did test it out on um, some of my Warhammer miniatures just as test like test bunnies. Um, and, yeah, it does work on just a matte base. So, I mean, if you guys, yeah, if you guys are watching and you are from you know, any of the Aussie viewers or subscribers that I do have, um, it's, if you can't get the pledge, yeah, that this is your next best bet. Um, if you, and, and I'm talking about if you can't, Get um, your Vallejos. It's like you just you just can't get it. Like you don't have you don't have a credit card, and you you don't have well, obviously got the internet because you're watching it. But yeah, if you don't have a credit card to buy the stuff from overseas, or you don't have a hobby shop nearby, and you've got a, you do have a hardware store. Um, yeah, and it's it's the only water-based um, floor polish or floor um, clear coat that I know of. Um, if you guys out there do know um, of another brand, um, yeah, let me know. I'm curious because I'm always willing to try something new. Um, so that's yeah, that's that issue. So yeah, so so far, look, yeah. So far with this um, Atelier um, Free Flow Artist Acrylic, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, it's it's really spraying. It is really no different to spraying. I guess it sprays a lot like um, um, the Atelier uh, Acrylic Acrylic paint. Very very similar. Um, you've got to thin it out. As well, it's not straight out of the bottle. Um, if I can, if I can show you if I pop the pop the cap open. That's probably just a bubble, I think. No, it's paint all the way through. But you can actually see how thick this stuff is. If I can get it back in camera, for one dickhead. So, oops, get in the shot short. Yeah, so you can get it. So you can see that it's you know, it doesn't just run down really quick. It takes a bit of there's a bit of viscosity to it. Um, so I think, and it's and it brush paints pretty well too. But I didn't really buy it for um, brush painting. I bought um, awesome clean. Just make a big mess of the bottle. No, like it's I bought it more for. Um, pre shading it's, so I'm thinking what is it this is a I think I paid uh, I spent a lot the other day 20 bucks at the art shop so and then the I bought that pencil is about three so I, I'm guessing these would, would have been around the eight dollar mark um, and that's for a 60 mil bottle of thick paint so by the time I thin this out and this is probably a 
um, I'm trying to think. At this stage, it's probably like a a 60-40 ratio. Um, 60% um, thinners or water to yeah the 40% paint. So it's not really a 50-50 mix because this paint is quite thick. Um, and I also got the burnt umber, which is going to be for um, um, my made more like tanks. So when I do the Abrams, the M1A2, I think it is, or the A1 Abrams, um, I did. I don't. I, I did, and I did describe it in my last. Um, in my last, I think my Panther, I think it was the Panther, I think I've done two videos on the Panther, one was a reveal video and one was the update, bench update, which was the first video I'd done of it. And and because the, that I was using, just, to, um, just trying to make this as clear as possible, I was using the, the chocolate brown from the Tallery. Now, for me to get this is at the moment, unless I buy this online, and I don't, and I get whacked a, a huge amount for postage. So, um, I'm, I bought this to try and save it, and this is a chocolate brown and being um, dark. Was it burnt umber? It's a lot darker, so you can see how dark the difference is. Like it's the burnt umber is a lot darker than the chocolate brown, and that is what I used to pre-shade the the um, panther, but I mixed a bit of black, um, just a bit of black from Life Color, mixed into it. So hopefully now we're going to have you know close to 120 mils of um, of this burnt umber, which is I oh know it's not quite the. I mean these Vallejo. Bottles are 200, so yeah, almost half a bottle of. It doesn't seem, doesn't seem right, does it? 220, yeah, so probably just above half of that of paint pre shading. $8, $8 a piece, so it's going to last me a while. Um, and then the black's going to be for everything else, yeah. Um, so I've still got the. I've got an M1, I've got two of them sitting there. I've got the Meg Bradley. Uh, which is Lee Paul wants to do. I think there's a few of us in it as well um, for a buddy build uh, later on in the year. I think, I think it's at the end of the year or something like that, and even January or something like that. I think it's just when we all have time because um, the, the, I mean, Paul does an awesome review on it. So if you want to check out the review, like I'm, I haven't done one. Um, I think yeah, there's no like there's no point in me doing one because there's already a really good one out there. So if you want to check it out, go to the uh, International Scar Modeler uh, YouTube channel and you find it's uh, Meng Bradley one to thirty five uh, review and it's and it's a really really good one to um, check that out. So I've got that to do later on. I've also got the the Abrams, I've got the Macabre from Meng, which is, requires that brown. Um, also got a, the next piece of armour I'm actually building is going to be a 1-35 to um, Hummel uh, SD KFZ-165, um, which is a really nice piece of German armour, which is it's also it's going, to, going to require this dark, uh, this bird number, as appreciated. So um, that's it. That's it for the paint while I'm raining. I'm just yeah, I'm just having a, having a break because um, that was yeah, took a fair that took a bit out of me that one. So what we got so coming up when I do finish this smoke. I can't really smoke and paint at the same time. Actually, I shouldn't really smoke at the bench, but um, I'm trying to get one of these electric little. These little electric cigarette things that everyone's raving on about in the UK, which is, and that's another thing, I can't buy them out of the counter in Australia with the crappy laws you have. Um, you can buy tobacco out of the counter, which kills you, but you can't buy something that's um, food grade um, and it's an all that you're waiting on an electric thing and smoke it and try and quit. So, work that out. Um, 
So what we got is I'm just going to do the bottom. I've actually stuffed the bottom with some tissue. Uh, not the bottom here. I did that last night before I before I um, base coated this thing or the first layer of paint over the primer. Uh, I'm just air superiority blue, which is a really 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 light blue from Life Color, and I had to thin the piss out of it because it was. Like it sounds thin, but it's not. It's actually quite thick. Um, well, too thick to get through the airbrush anyway, so, so it will not brush paint. And, and if I thin it out too much, I've also got some. Um, where is it? Life color also make a. Where is it? Where is it? Um, that clear. This might be here, guys. This is it. It's a. Acrylic thickener. So if I do thicken the, it's more like more or less just a medium, just a thick medium. So yeah, if I do thin the paint out too much, and instead of tipping it out or wasting more paint, um, maybe I can just add a bit more thickener to the you know, the hopper, and the cup, and the airbrush. So Bob, your uncle, have you all good? But so. So what I'll do is I'll finish this off. I'll just pre-shade the rest of it, but um, and then I guess in like I'll cut it off here and um, tomorrow's if I do end up building tomorrow, um, like I'll, I think I'm just going to start doing it this way now, just so it's easier. Um, I'm just going to. Appreciate the rest of this. Call it quits tonight, and then tomorrow when I jump back on, you'll see it all pre-shaded, and then we'll just basically continue on from there. So I mean, I don't really want to bore you guys to make you sit through um, watching me pre-shade the second half of this aircraft. So, so that's it, guys. Just want to say, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and yeah, let let me know below. Um, in the comments, um, how do you this thing? Yeah, so let me know what you think. You know, do you want to see more of these live builds on the channel? Um, I mean, you just got to understand that. Yeah, I don't have the time to be editing videos and stuff. I'll, like, I want to get as many videos as I can on this channel because I do want this channel to grow, and I am getting a lot of support um, from you guys out there. And and without you guys subscribing. Um, liking my videos, sharing my work on your channels, which is great. I don't mind at all. I mean, if you if you want to download these videos onto your hard drive, I mean, go for it as well. Like, I'm I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna bloody sting you for it and you know and cancel your, your subscription. I mean, obviously, if you're being fair, you know, like if you're not re-uploading on your own channel, calling your work and then. And I don't mind at all. Um, it's, I mean, it's, like, I've done it myself. I've downloaded people's videos and I've just got them stored on my hard drive, um, just so I can look back later. Because um, if you know, for some unknown reason, um, you know, my internet crashes or something happens, um, yeah, I've got them on my hard drive. I can watch later. I mean, I don't abuse it. I mean, I don't. I don't abuse the system where I, I take credit for those videos that just there on my hard drive, so I just watch it later for reference. If I have any troubles, anything I want answered, yeah, I can. So yeah, in saying that, I mean, if you want to go download them, yeah, feel free, guys. It's, um, but yeah, I just want to say thanks for your support so far. I mean, I think I've only had this channel now for I think six. What are we now? August. So eighth. For what, seven months, I think this channel's been up for, and I mean it's it's slowly growing. Um, I think I'm only up to like 70, 70, um, 70 um, subscribers out there, and and it will hopefully it will grow. And, and I want this, so yeah, I don't want to crap on too much. Like I'm just blabbling bullshit here. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below and um, what you think. Um, if there's any other videos, obviously I can only I can only do 
what I'm doing at the moment. I mean, I can't, yeah, I don't want to be having 10, 15 builds on the day. I just don't have the space in the house of mine. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, make sure you subscribe, like, share, and, um, yeah, catch us later, and, and I'll see you probably on the next one, which hopefully will be tomorrow. Catch you later, guys. Peace.